stadium, the Gator Bowl. It's an 82,000 seat municipally owned stadium. We're sitting in the mayor's skybox and there's 26 luxury skyboxes with a 350 seat press facility. And in 1983, we spent $24 million bringing the stadium up to NFL specifications. So you've made some renovations already, but what else do you have to do to attract an NFL team? We feel like that the skybox revenue is very important to an NFL owner, and we have already done the architectural and engineering design work to put an additional 54 skyboxes on the east side of the stadium. And, and we would also have to build a uh, practice facility away from the stadium at the University of North Florida uh, with three practice facilities fields and a front office field uh, that we would give to the team if they moved to Jacksonville. Jacksonville loves football. We, um, we've always supported uh, good college football, good professional uh, uh, football, both from a preseason or exhibition uh, uh, stance, as well as, uh, as our own USFL and the old World Football League. Uh, Jacksonville is a football community. Do you think it's important for the city of Jacksonville to have an NFL franchise? I think it would be. It's a growing city, you know. It, be a great idea for it. Oh, absolutely. I think just the, the fact that we have expressed our desire to have one has brought a lot of publicity to Jacksonville. If we could get the right type of team, I think we'd do good. We don't want to, uh, I don't think we need to bring in some other team, uh, Atlanta or something like that, that's already a loser or something. If we could get a new team and start out a team in a couple of years, and uh, I think the city would support one. So will the NFL be persuaded to place a third franchise in Florida? And when might it happen? Well, Commissioner Pete Rosell announced recently that he would appoint a committee to organize the expansion of the league the day after he finalizes a collective bargaining agreement with the Players Union, which would stabilize the financial situation of the league. Then any new teams would take their place on the field within two years. But that still means the earliest date would be 1991. Top of the list would be the two cities whose teams deserted them. Baltimore and Oakland. But if the NFL is to break new ground, then Jacksonville has to be favorite. So unless there's someone out there with $100 million to spare, London will just have to wait for its turn. Well, I know in the Falcons case, the owner, Rankin Smith, would have had an extra $14 million a year coming into the team's bank account had they moved. And with an average profit being around three to $4 million a year, sometime soon, an owner somewhere will succumb to that kind of financial reward. So we go into the second half of the season, and my preseason picks, the San Francisco 49ers, who have looked nonchalant one week and Super Bowl bound the next, and the Cleveland Browns, who due to key injuries earlier in the year, had a slow start. Both are now beginning to show the consistency I had hoped for when I chose them. But this season, more than any I can remember, there is a parody among the teams and only Buffalo really looked to have a seal on a playoff spot so far. So for Super Bowl XXIII, I'm sticking to my original selection of the 49ers and the Browns, who along with the Bills, Bengals, Oilers, Giants, Bears, Rams and Saints have set the pace so far in this 1988 season. So until next Tuesday, we leave you with a reminder of the big plays so far in a boy's own world. Good night.
Indeed it is. And there are two Channel 4 books by Ken Thomas to accompany the season. American Football, Book 6, price £9.95, and the newly revised and updated Who's Who in American Football, priced £4.95. Both available from bookshops.